From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Pratiksha and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of these stories that will offer you a glimpse into India's culture, diversity and the developments happening in and around the world. Let's begin the show. Onam, a festival of floral artistry and delectable cuisines, was celebrated with great enthusiasm across India. The festival drew people from all across the globe to engage themselves in the 10-day harvest festival, which also comprised a number of mind-refreshing events like boat races, folk dance performances, rangoli making and other cultural programs. So let's explore one more event this week that is yet another true manifestation of India's cultural heritage. Kerala, popularly known as God's own country, is located in India's southern part. It has a long and rich cultural heritage that is closely intertwined with its flora and fauna. Annual festivals like Onam bring true joy to the people as it connects them with nature and cultivates fondness for one another. Start with sports events like boat races and tug of war, followed by traditional floral designs created by women with fresh yellow flowers to form rangolis. At the same time, men flaunt pulkit art, while temples perform religious processions every other day, drawing large numbers of people for feasts. This is how the 10-day harvest festival of Onam is celebrated in the southern state. Displaying over 20 cuisines served on banana leaves with a series of traditional folk performances, the Onam festival was celebrated with great fervor this year, attracting social media influencers and bloggers from across the globe. We are very privileged to be here today from North India to South especially Kerala being a very exotic place, a very offbeat destination. It's been such a beautiful experience up to now, visiting all the cultural heritage, the different places where government is dealing. The festival of cuisines Onam Sadhya, prepared with 13 dishes, served on banana leaves, was widely observed and celebrated worldwide, especially by the Malayalis. On the occasion, People were found standing in long queues with their eyes fixed on the doors of the temples and their hearts full of hope to seek blessings for a prosperous life. Meanwhile, the premises of temples were filled with the scent of incense and the sound of chanting mantras. On the other side, enthusiast groups were busy entertaining crowds with their traditional exotic clothing and captivating dance forms such as Kathakali, Duruvatera, Pulikali, Kumatikali, Tumba, Talal and Onamkali. Today being a very auspicious day, so we wanted to celebrate our Onam, our first Onam actually after being married. So in the Sitavudar I mean Koim to Temple. So uh, just uh, we wanted to start our first Onam being very happy. We have come to this temple for Onam. We have been coming to this temple for like ever since I knew. Uh, yeah. So it is always so crowded here, like every year for Onam, it is always like this. And we do this uh, prayers and all for the welfare and the happiness and prospect of the family and for the well-being of whomever we, are, we care about. Believers say the festival celebrates the homecoming of the mythological king Mahabali from Patal Lok, who, despite being a demon, was generous to people and his reign was considered a golden era for the people of Kerala. Onam is very special to our heart because uh, we Malayalis grow uh, by celebrating Onam each and every year. So it's very, very special to us. Uh, whoever uh, in which part of the world, everyone was so curious to celebrate Onam. And uh, yeah, we everyone want to celebrate Onam with our family. So, uh, after my five years of MBBS life, uh, I couldn't celebrate Onam very much. So, today, uh, this year, after completion of my MBBS, I am very much uh, excited to celebrate Onam with my family. Festivals like these 
serve a greater significance for people of today's generations as they not only refresh their minds but also help them gain consciousness towards their everyday activities apart from the health aspect the festival is also garnering appreciation and alluring tourists from around the globe this week india also celebrated raksha bandhan a festival that rejoices in the purest kind of bond between a brother and a sister The festivity evokes a sense of brotherhood as people cutting across different religious backgrounds step forward to celebrate the bond of love, care and responsibility. Today in our show we'll take you to a small rakhi shop in Gujarat's Ahmedabad where Hindus and Muslims have been preparing rakhis for years serving as an example of communal harmony. Let's have a look. Raksha Bandhan, a widely celebrated festival in India, glorifies the beautiful bond between a brother and a sister every year the sisters tie a silk thread known as rakhi on their brother's wrist symbolizing an unbreakable bond of love and care between siblings the rakhi on the brother's wrist is a kind of promise that he makes to his sister that he will stand by her to the peril of his life the tradition of rakhi dates back to about 6000 years when sisters of warriors and kings would tie rakhis on their brothers wrist for their safety and well-being during the war however history has preserved a ton of stories narrating instances of raksha bandhan where the bond between a brother and a sister has come out as the most sacred and the most revered the epic tale of hindu rani karnavati and muslim king humayu who took their brother sister bond beyond the boundaries of religions still reverberates in hearts of every indian citizen today the hindu festival of raksha bandhan has garnered so much popularity and respect in other religions that all the communities celebrate this festival with an indomitable sense of communal harmony a small rakhi shop run by iqbal satar in collaboration with his hindu counterpart Sunil Gupta in Gujarat's Ahmedabad is a living example of this ever flourishing bond of love and brotherhood. मैं यहां पर आई हूं लेने ये इकबाल भाई के वहां पर इन्होंने बहुत अच्छी राखियों का कलेक्शन बनाया हुआ है बहुत ही अच्छा जैसे हम हिंदू हैं पर वो मुसलमान हैं पर उन्होंने हम हिंदुत्व का ध्यान रखते हुए हम हिंदुत्व का ध्यान रखते हुए उन्होंने हमारे देवी देवता कृष्ण ओम श्री जैसे काफी हिंदुत्व का ध्यान रखते हुए काफी राखियों का सर्जन किया हुआ है उन्होंने एकता का एक बहुत अच्छा मैसेज दिया है उन्होंने हमारे देवी देवताओं में या मुसलमान के देवी देवताओं में कोई भेदभाव नहीं किया Raksha Bandhan is observed on the last day of the Hindu lunar month of Shravana. The markets in Ahmedabad were bustling with women, men and children who wanted to buy the best quality rakhis and sweets for their beloved siblings. Rakhi jo hai wo hamari char family se banata hai, char peedhi se aur hamara handicraft ka main business hai. To ye rakhi ki jo tyohar hai वो एक त्यौहार को हमने इसके लिए पसंद किया है कि पूरे विश्व के अंदर दुनिया के अंदर भाई बहन का प्रेम का ये एक ही त्यौहार है परफॉर्मिंग द ट्रेडिशनल रिचुअल्स ऑन द डे ऑफ रक्षा बंधन फैमिलीज इन एवरी नूक एंड कॉर्नर ऑफ द कंट्री सेलिब्रेटेड द फेस्टिविटी ऑफ लव एंड कंपेशन एंगेजिंग इन अ कॉर्डियल सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ रक्षा बंधन सिस्टर्स टाइड राखीज ऑन द ब्रदर्स रिस्ट while receiving blessings and gifts from their beloved ones aaj ka din agar sabhi to khushi lag raha hai kyunki aaj khushi ka din hai bhai behan ka din hai har saal mein ek hi to din aata hai rakhi bandhne ke liye to is din to sabhi hum log khushi hai ki bhai log ka rakhi bandhe log hum log mithai khaya hai bhai log mithai bhi diya hai gift bhi diya hai although the festival of raksha bandhan is prominent in hindu culture ikbal never fails to meet the expectations of his buyers who genuinely appreciate the distinctiveness of his beautiful rakhis these modest actions taken by people like ikbal hold a significant impact on the future and help preserve our nation's secular fabric 
And now, I round up off some of the major stories that made news recently. Over 450 swanky high-end luxury cars are being arranged for delegates as the Indian capital of New Delhi gears up for the G20 summit. गवर्नमेंट की तरफ हमें जो रिक्वायरमेंट आई है साढ़े चार सौ गाड़ियों से ज़्यादा रिक्वायरमेंट आई है जो दिल्ली में आई है अब इंस में ऐसे होता है कि जैसे हम अपनी जो है वो डेढ़ सौ गाड़ियाँ प्रोवाइड कर रहे हैं बट डेढ़ सौ गाड़ियों के अलावा जो बाकी गाड़ियाँ हैं वो बाकी ट्रांसपोर्ट ट्रांसपोर्ट इंडस्ट्री के लोग मिल बना रहे हैं और उनके अलावा भी जो है मुंबई से आगरा से दिल्ली से अलग अलग जगहों से आगरा मुंबई पंजाब से गाड़ियाँ आ रही हैं रिक्वायरमेंट को पूरा करने के लिए As per a car rental firm, luxury cars like the Audi Q7, BMW 5 Series, and Mercedes Maybach are being arranged for the G20 summit, which will be held on September 9 and 10. U.S. President Joe Biden, Chinese Premier Xi Jinping, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and French President Emmanuel Macron are expected to attend the G20 summit. Russian President Vladimir Putin will not be present. During the two-day event, India hopes to forge agreement among members on matters ranging from reforms of multilateral banks to developing a global approach to cryptocurrencies. Exiled Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama flew down to India's northern Kangra district after his two-month visit to India's Himalayan desert of Ladakh. Of course, it is very important for us to he see him. Even though we stay here in Dharamsala, we all are very happy whenever like, we hear the news like the Lama is approaching or whenever he is going outside because we want to have him has his blessing. The spiritual leader left Indian hill town Dharamsala in July, where exiled Tibetans live in large numbers as refugees. The followers arranged a vibrant and colorful welcome with dances and posters for the monk at the airport on his return. The Dalai Lama was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1989. After a rebellion against Chinese rule in 1959, the spiritual leader exiled himself to India and has since been living mostly in Himachal Pradesh's Dharamshala. The maroon robe monk supporters operate a government in exile in India and promote Tibet's autonomy by peaceful means. The Indian Space Agency released new images of Chandrayaan 3's rover Pragyan's latest findings on the surface of lunar South Pole. As per the Indian Space Research Organization, the rover in its journey witnessed a crater that had a 4 meter diameter and the rover positioned itself 3 meters ahead of its location. The rover commanded to retrace the path by ISRO is now safely heading on a new path, said the agency. The mission has been endowed with several in-situ experimentations of which the thermal readings of the lunar surface have been sent across to ISRO. The soft textbook touchdown by the lander after a failed attempt in 2019 sparked widespread jubilation and celebration in the world's most populous country. The media hailed the historic landing as India's biggest scientific feat. India, often known for its diverse culture and unique traditions around the world, has its own value system and beliefs derived from scriptures and the sayings of scholars and learned people like Sufi saints. They have not only played a key role in uniting religious communities, but also have emphasized the inward search for humanity. Today in our show, we'll take you to the Dargah of Sayyid Yufudullah in Tripura, which has become a common pilgrimage site for people from different religious backgrounds and ethnicities. Let's have a look. One of the northern eastern states of India, Tripura, has a rich tribal heritage and culture. At times, this culture had strong influences of Sufism and various other beliefs, making it an amalgamation of religions and practices. Sayyid Yufudullah Mazar Sharif in Tripura state is a glowing example of this multi-religious character developed over time among the residents. People from different walks of life come to the Darga to offer their sincere prayers to the revered saint and seek his blessings. 
There is no discrimination among communities as everybody bows at the shrine and offers chadars. The 114 years old Darga draws a large number of devotees from across the state who come here to get their wishes fulfilled. यहां आके सुकून मिलता है चैन मिला जैसे मान लो ये हिंदू मुस्लिम कुछ नहीं इसमें सब ही अपना हस्ते के लिए आता है जो आने के बाद सुकून मिलता है चैन मिलता है इसलिए आते हैं जो आने का कोई मन्नत पूरा होता है कभी कभार हम लोग इसमें विश्वास करते हैं तो इसलिए आते हैं The shrine is often filled with people who come here to be at peace and find an escape from their mundane lives. Devotees spend hours sitting and meditating in the premises of the darga. To facilitate these devotees, a langar is also organized once a week. A large number of visitors and devotees regardless of their religious backgrounds are served the meals to ensure that nobody goes empty stomach from the center of peace and harmony. Is mazar mein main bachpan se aa raha hu aur yahan pe main kuch milne ke liye nahi aata hu main jo yahan pe aane se ek dil mein sukoon milta hai ek dil ki jo maan lijiye ke mujhe ek kabhi bhi matlab कुछ भी बेचैनी होता है परेशान होता हो तो मैं यहाँ पर आता हूँ तब उससे एक शांति मिलती है उस शांति को महसूस करने के लिए मैं यहाँ पर आता हूँ ये करीबन 114 साल पुराना है और यहाँ पर सभी धर्मों के लोग आते हैं आते हैं यहाँ पर इसलिए क्योंकि यहाँ पे सब कुछ ना कुछ मन्नत मांगते हैं और मन्नत जो भी मांगता है वो ये यह करता है कि कोशिश करता है कि उसका मन्नत पूरा हो जब भी उसका मन्नत पूरा होता है वो आता है और उसका आने का सिलसिला हमेशा सूफी श्राइन्स इन दरगाज हैव ऑलवेज बीन कॉमन डेस्टिनेशन ऑफ पिलग्रमेज फॉर ऑल रिलीजन्स द की लेसन ऑफ सूफिज्म सच एज यूनिटी एंड टुगेदरनेस अमंग दियरियस कम्युनिटीज आर फॉलोड इवन टुडे एंड विल बी फॉलोड रिलीजियसली इन दी टाइम्स टू कम And now we bring you some of the stories from recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Revelers hurl tons of overripe tomatoes at each other in the eastern Spanish town of Bunol at the annual Tomatina festival. Trucks loaded with tomatoes drove through the main street distributing the sappy projectiles while party goers threw them and covered each other in red juice. The tomatina is said to have originated from a spontaneous burst up among villagers in 1945. It was banned for a while during the 1950s at the height of General Francisco Franco's dictatorship but survived to gain popularity across Spain in the 1980s and today draws large crowds of visitors from abroad as well as Spaniards. An ancient complex inside the old city of Jerusalem is revived again, transforming into a cultural center after a few years of renovation. ففعليا هو بير زي ما قلنا القصه الفلسطينيه من عين مراه وليش ركزنا نعمل الدار القنص ولا ارتباط المكان وارتباط المنطقه بهي المراه هي قصه مراه عاشت بهي المنطقه فحبينا اول شيء نضوي الضوء على المكان هذا اللي هو مكان تاريخي بعيني لنا كثير كاولاد القدس ونجيب عليه اولاد القدس نفسهم لانه احنا ما بنعرف هاي المواقع فهو احياء للمكان اللي بخصنا وبنفس الوقت كمان لارتباط هي هي المراه بالمكان Dar al Konsol which has ancient stone walls that have been a witness to different cultures in the old city throughout history currently host performances art galleries bazaars and cultural events the renovated historical place contains two floors the first is residential for local christian families while the ground floor is a museum bookshop restaurant space for startups and a cultural center creating opportunities for locals particularly the christian community in the old city dar al konsul means the house of the consul and is spread across 2400 square meters bounded by khan al zit a market in the old city In 1856 it was serving as the Prussian consulate and it is currently owned by the custody of Holy Land. According to the custodian of the Holy Land, 
it emphasizes the importance of preserving in the homes and real estates of local Christians as well as their presence in the old city. Archaeologists in northern Peru have unearthed a 3,000-year-old tomb that they believe might have honored an elite religious leader in the Indian country some three millennia ago. We have discovered a tomb of 3,000 years of antiquity. This tomb is very peculiar. The size is big. It is almost 2 meters of diameter and 1 meter of profundity. Y una personaje de hombre masculino y este, echado a boca abajo ¿no? y medio cuerpo arriba está extendida pero la parte de pie está cruzada. Esa es posición bien peculiar. Dubbed as the priest of Paco Pampa, referring to the highland archaeological zone where the tomb was found. The priest was buried under six layers of ash mixed with black earth, decorated ceramic balls and seals indicating ancient ritual body paint used for people of elite standing. Two seals were also found along the upper edges of the tomb, one with an anthropoformic face looking east and another with a jaguar design facing west. The Paco Pampa archaeological project has been working in the area since 2005, the ministry said, adding that rock layers indicate the priest who would have been buried around 1200 BC, was some five centuries older than the tomb of the Lady of Paco Pampa and the priest of the Serpent Jaguar of Paco Pampa, discovered in 2009 and 2015 respectively. The fascinating land of Odisha is known for its various cultures and traditions that are celebrated with much fanfare all around the year. Ranging from Puri's Rath Yatra to Bhubaneswar Temple festivals, this estate never fails to amaze its visitors with its wondrous fiestas. Recently, it witnessed the 46th edition of the Barsha festival where the collection of various cultures occurred under one roof. Let's take a look. Bhuvneshwar, the temple city of India, is home to over 500 temples. The city has a rich cultural heritage and is believed to have temples dating back to the 6th and 11th centuries. The 46th edition of the Barsha Monsoon Malhar Festival, organized by Chinta Ochetana Organization in the capital city of Bhuvaneshwar, mesmerized the eager visitors who had come a long way to witness the grand fiesta of the season. The three-day cultural event comprised dance, music and other entertainment delights to engage the spectators in the month of monsoon. छह ऋतु में वर्षा एक ऋतु है जो कि महसूस होता है एक गर्मी के दिन जो बैसाखी होता है वो महसूस होता है और जो शीत है जो जो जाड़ करते हैं वो थोड़ा थोड़ा महसूस होता है और चार ऋतु कहाँ गुम हो गए वो ढूंढना पड़ता है वो है नहीं इसके कारण हम लोग हैं जितना देखिए जितना जानवर है जो नदी है जो पर्वत है जो मेघ है वो अपना कुछ नहीं बदलते हैं लेकिन हम जो इंसान हैं हम इसको बिल्कुल इतना बर्बाद कर दिया है जो कि प्रकृति नहीं रहा तो इसीलिए हम प्रकृति को लेकर के फेस्टिवल कर रहे हैं वर्षा बैसाखी और बसंत Eminent personalities from different fields are closely associated with the organization and are committed to the cause of the socio-cultural development of the people across India. The evening involved a dance recital based on the ushering of monsoon season performed by renowned Odyssey artist Sujata Mohupatra. The performances were all about the life of nature and its evolution. Barsha is a great story and uh, we all enjoy when the rain comes. But when the rain goes furious, everybody in the world, they also suffer. So Barsha unites 
and barsa also take away the life. So life giving rain, how essential for us to the earth and to the human being and even if to the bird. Especially today when I performed, I performed Rutu Shangara, Kalidasa's written Rutu Sambara, where one episode of rain and where I showed how rain gives love. Chintao Chetana is an esteemed organization that emphasizes on cultural activities as a means of strengthening national unity. The organization also focuses on social services and economic development as part of the wholesome growth of the people. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback on myindia at the rate anin.com. I'm your host Pratiksha and it's a goodbye from the entire production team.